So ladies and gentlemen, you're going to have to bear with me for a minute. Why would the NHL expand to uh, Denver where they were competing with the WHA for the city's first major pro hockey franchise? Well, that's what happened in the middle of the 1970s. Now, the Denver Spurs and its various incarnations were based out of Denver, Colorado. The Spurs began in the Western Hockey League in 68 and played at the Denver Coliseum. The Spurs then became the first professional sports team in Colorado to win a championship in 71-72. Now, after the WHA uh, folded in 74, the team transferred to the CHL for the 74-75 season. Now, here it gets complicated. In June 74, uh, Ivan Mullenix, owner of the CHL Spurs, was awarded a conditional NHL franchise for the 1977 season. With the McNichols Sports Arena already complete by 75, he looked to enter the NHL a year early, and the league attempted to broker an arrangement where Mullenix would acquire the California Golden Seals, then under the league ownership, and move them to Denver and Louisville of an expansion team. At the same time, the bankrupt Pittsburgh Penguins would be sold to the Seattle Group, who also held a conditional franchise, which would have been named the Seattle Totems, not the Kraken like we have now. Now, the proposed double arrangement fell through, and with the continuing franchise difficulties, the NHL called off the 77 expansion. Mullenix accepted an offer from the WHA to join that league for the 76 season. The Spurs, again, were the second WHL refugee to join the WHA, following the ever-popular Phoenix Roadrunners. The WHA Spurs claimed most of the players in a dispersal draft from the now-defunct Chicago Cougars, who had folded in 1975, and some players from the CHL Spurs were also retained. Now, an SI preview on the upcoming season noted that it was going to be Stalwart's Gordy Howe's 28-year Major League Hockey, and the Spurs first. Now, for some bizarre and crackpot region, the reason the magazine picked the expansion team to finish last in the WHA's Western Division. It also said that unless the Spurs drew well immediately, Denver's stay in big league hockey could be exactly 20 years shorter than Gordy House. Now, the Spurs' first exhibition game, a game against Howe's Houston uh, Arrows proved to be a microcosm of their brief stay at the WHA. No beer, beer was available because Mullenix was unable to get a liquor license. There was no flag to face during the National Anthem, and the scoreboards didn't work. A typical hockey problem. Now, only 5,000 fans showed up. The situation did get much better during the regular season, as they only averaged 3,000 fans in a 17,000-seat arena. The most widely cited reason for the poor attendance was hard feelings over been spurned by the NHL. Denver area fans had been banking on an NHL team after three years of advertising and did not consider the WHA to be a major league, but we all know that the Colorado Rockies showed up, full uh, moved, then the, then the later Colorado Avalanche. But Now, now the situation wasn't much better in the ice either. Veteran uh, skater, former Montreal Canadian Rob Backstrom, was one of the Spurs' few experienced players, but at age 38, his career was on a decline. Still, he wound up leading the team with 50 points in 41 games. The rest of the roster was filled with cast-offs and career minor leaguers, such as Don, Don Borgeson, who had played for the Spurs from 71 to 73 in the WHL. He finished second to Backstrom in points with 41. They could never uh, find an answer in goal as well, as uh, one of their three goalies ran up a staggering 15, 15 goals against average. Uh, the Spurs played their first regular season game at home against the Indianapolis Racers. Before only 5,000 fans, the Spurs scored their first goal, only give, giving up seven unanswered goals a route to a 7-1 loss. By December 30th, they were in the Western Division cellar with a 13-21 mark. Despite an overtime win over the Racers that night in Denver, it would turn out to be the last game the Spurs would play in Colorado. Now, rumors had abounded even before the Spurs got on the ice that the NHL was planning to move either the Seals or the KC Scouts to Denver. By late December, Mullenix got word that the Scouts were in serious discussions about moving to Denver for the following season. Knowing he couldn't hope to compete with an NHL team, 
Mullinex began to process a selling team to the Founders Club, a group of businessmen based in Ottawa on New Year's Eve. He had initially began negotiations with the Founders Club a month into the season when the first rumors cropped up of a scout's move to Denver. Soon after, Mullinex reopened the Ottawa Feelers. The Founders Club insisted that, that Mullinex moved the team to Ottawa immediately. In the middle of the road trip, Mullinex quickly moved the Spurs to Ottawa on January 2, 1976, where he renamed the Ottawa Civics. The players reportedly only learned of the move to Ottawa when he stood on the ice in Cincinnati under Denver Colors and suddenly heard O Canada being played in honor of it being the national anthem of the nation of their new home city. Now, despite playing the solo crowds at two home games in Ottawa, Mullinex and the Founders Club were unable to reach a deal, and Mullinex was not willing to operate the team in Ottawa. Negotiations for the sale were called off January 15th, and the team folded for good two days later. The Spurs Civics 41 game existence made measly the shortest lived franchise in WJ history and one of the short li- shortest lived franchises in North American professional sports history. Now, the Spurs' abrupt departure turned out to be a prescient move as the Scouts indeed moved to Denver the following season, becoming the Colorado Rockies. The Rockies only lasted six seasons before relocating again and becoming the future Stanley Cup champion, New Jersey Devils. It was not until the relocation of the Quebec Nordiques, formerly a WHA franchise, the Denver's the Colorado Avalanche in 1995 that Denver would enjoy lasting success in Major League Hockey. Now, the last act of Spurs player did NHL was the uh, long-lasting Ron DeLorme. He will retire after the 85 season. As well, Spurs draft pick Mel Bridgman played in the NHL until 89, but never played in the WHA. So season by season record again, WHL 68 to 74, 74 to 75 Central Hockey League, 75 76 WHA. Best season for the uh, Spurs franchise again was 71 72, where they defeated the San Diego Gulls and the Portland Buckaroos in the um, Western Hockey League uh, Championship Round to uh, win the title. Second best season was their last year in the CHL where he lost in the quarterfinals to the Omaha Knights, despite a regular season record of 36-29-13. Pretty, uh, pretty decent. Uh, but uh, that, la- that season from the Spurs, it could have worked, but the problem is you have to go to full route to make a franchise work, and he couldn't go to full route. So thanks for listening. Denver Spurs. Bye.